Welcome to Trading the Close on this Monday. I'm Tony Valliere with Verified Investing. Here's what's making headlines today. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says the United States is prepared to sanction Chinese banks and companies if they aid Russia's military in invading Ukraine. President Joe Biden wants to cancel some student debt for about 25 million borrowers. Trump media stock dips 10 percent in early trading. Meanwhile, Tesla shares rise after Elon Musk says he will reveal a robo-taxi in August. And you may have heard there was a solar eclipse today. Did you see it? Hopefully with some glasses on. Let's get a check of where things stand just minutes before the closing bell on this Monday afternoon. We've got the Dow down just 35 points, 0.09 percent. The Nasdaq up 17 points, 0.11 percent. The S&P 500 down three points, 0.07 percent. We've got oil down slightly, gold up over eight dollars, and then Bitcoin up over $2,300 at this hour. Let's get a check on the markets now with Chief Market Strategist Gareth Soloway. I got to ask you, and, and I do feel it's a stupid question, but I still want to ask, did the eclipse, do you think, have any kind of impact on trading? It seemed like a very quiet day. Yeah, so, so there's no doubt that the afternoon volume was lighter, probably because people were outside watching the eclipse, right? People traveled for this, yes. too. I worked in news for years, yep. decades, and I've never seen so many people in news being flown to different areas in the country for something that lasts, yeah. you know, a very there's, short there's time. Also, there's also a spike in LASIK eye stuff afterwards. Because, <laughs> no doubt, no, of kidding. course. Because yeah. of course people, you gotta remember guys, you gotta, you gotta yeah. somehow protect those eyes. There's but always someone who forgets. That's right, that's right. But listen, today, yes, the volume was lighter and the volatility was so tiny. But look at, look at the action today. I find this fascinating because this is what we call wedges within wedges, right? And so what we see is this is where the day started right over. It's even hard to find because there wasn't really a really a gap right here. Right. So if you take so if, number one, if you take remember that massive sell off we had last yeah. Thursday. So if you take the high of that and the low of that and you draw it through, you can see how these lines kind of all connect. And then even today, it just got thinner and thinner. Now, what I'm finding interesting is you're seeing a little bit of selling. It's trying to break down at the end of the day. Doesn't look like it's gonna be successful here because the volume is so light, but there's no doubt generally on light volume days, the markets tend to float up and we're not really seeing that today. Part of that is the CPI data. Everyone is waiting for that massive CPI data. Are we gonna have three months in a row of higher inflation? That's what we're gonna find out on Wednesday. Wednesday, okay. And then of course, Friday, we have JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, Citigroup, a bunch of these big banks. Earnings season finally kicks off. Earnings season is one of my favorites because it creates volatility, right? You get the bigger moves in stocks. As a swing trader, as a day trader, that's what I love. No doubt. Okay, looking for movement. Uh, how about Tesla? I know there was some movement yeah. there today. Yeah, so Tesla, again, you know, Elon Musk said, uh, I think it was Friday evening, that Tesla was going to be debuting a, a robo-taxi. I think it was by October or something like that. So what we do know is that, number one, the stock was in the doldrums, right? It was like one of the worst performers. And so it's almost like, you know, if you're a CEO of a company, you know, listen, every, every CEO can deny that they look at the stock price, but they all do. Of course. They all do. And so it's like, all right, well, what can we what can we throw out there that gets people excited and gets the stock up? Well, yeah. robo-taxis, I'd love to be in a robo-taxi or even just have one and let it take me wherever I want. Sure. And so what we saw <laughs> today is a gap higher and generally it trended neutral to higher. There is this bigger kind of uh, channel that I was following as a day trader where you could see again it was just kind of sticking between these levels here. So if we look at this you can see very clearly how the lows down here were aligning and then you take that high and connect it to there and you actually kissed it right there and it got rejected. So, so in general it was kind of held but it definitely one of the better performers out there unlike NVIDIA, SMCI, which again, you know, we're so used to, if you, you know, the amount of trading the closes we've done in the last six months or whatever, almost every time it was, well, the semiconductors were outperforming, yeah. they're so strong, NVIDIA's up, but the market was flat. Well, today, interestingly enough, we're seeing the semis really underperform. Starting to pull back. Yes. But and, you and, have talked about this. I've right. been with you for many months, and you said eventually these are going to pull back. And, and can't it keep going yes. forever. Yes. And it's just like, so eventually it runs out of buyers, which is what's been pushing it up. And eventually, you know, calmer minds or saner minds prevail where you start to say, okay, how do we, how do we really, it's not because, it, 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 right now or prior, it was the hype was the excitement, everyone was like, AI is gonna be the biggest thing. And then eventually people started to say, okay, yes, it's gonna be big, just like the internet was with the dot coms, mm -hmm. but 
at what point do these stocks get competition? I've talked about margins coming down. Yes. And, and again, if we flip over to the NVIDIA chart, you can see again, it had this dip that was last week. That was that big sell off. And then since then, we've kind of been barely holding steady. Notice this trend line. So this is something I'll be watching for tomorrow where if we break this line, you probably go down and retest that level around 858, that double bottom. But notice how it's almost like a ball. A ball got dropped. The biggest bounce comes when you drop that ball and it gets the biggest bounce. And then look, less, 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 less. Well, like you said, and then eventually it goes. You've been hammering at that line. That's right. The more it hammers, times. just like a door, if you slam into a door, eventually that door gives way. Yeah. And so that's the concept behind a trend line of support that keeps getting hammered. Eventually it weakens and it's more than likely. We talk likelihoods, right? Probabilities. Probability is the more it hits, the more likely it breaks to the next level below that. Can we look at Super Micro? Yes. Um, because you had a head and shoulders that you pointed yes. out, and um, it's very clear. Yes, it's not super. always this clear, but if you're trying to learn and, mm -hmm. and educate yourself on the charts. So Super Micro, another semi that's weak today, while the markets are neutral-ish to positive-ish. And you can see, again, just so crystal clear here, right? I mean, this is, a, again, a daily chart. Now, it hasn't broken the neckline. For everyone out there, the neckline is essentially, like, number one, head and shoulders should generally resemble the human body, right? You have the shoulders on either side. The head is the highest point. That has to be. The head always has to be the highest point of a head and shoulder pattern. Um, and then you basically take the arm. I call it the armpit. <laughs> this is the armpit to the armpit right here. And that's your what's called your neckline. And that is your break point. So once that breaks, then this becomes very, very bearish. Doesn't mean it can't go like this and retrace, but eventually, you're generally, if you look at these patterns, ultimately it drops a lot more. I love to show this calculation here. You can calculate where, if this pattern breaks and completes, which it doesn't always, essentially what you do is you take your high of your head and you drop a plumb line right down to that neckline. You take that distance and replicate it wherever it breaks. And in this case, it's interesting because it takes you back to about $500, which if you look over here, where's $500? See the sideways action right here before yeah. that big move? That's right there, which makes sense because that's going to be that technical support level. So so really cool stuff on this, on this it SMCI. It is because it's not random. No. Everyone thinks chart moves are just random. Like normal people would look at this and be like, oh, it's just ups and downs and whips and... It's very I was calculated. Say whips and chains, but that's a little weird. <laughs> it's a different, <laughs> yeah, different show. Different show. That'll be the happy hour we yeah. debut. No, but in any case, uh, it definitely has a methodology behind it. There's yeah. subconscious human nature that's behind these charts, and I think that's so cool. Bitcoin. Yes. Um, because the having, um, you know, I, I've never really found an exact date. I have seen April nineteenth. Yeah. Around that I think that's time. what I've heard, too. I don't really okay. honestly pay too much attention to it. I know it's coming, and I know it's coming, I think, about two weeks, three weeks from now. Yeah. But, yeah, I think that's that's right around there. But the biggest thing on this is, well, so one thing, the halvings, everyone makes a big deal about them because it does shrink the supply that's being mined. But we have to remember that there's only about 2 million Bitcoins left to mine. So the majority, the 19 million out there, that's still out there to be bought and sold, right? And so, so yes, the having does impact the supply coming out. But if if people panic and sell their Bitcoin, that's way more Bitcoin than would be mined. So you have to just keep it in perspective that yes, the the having matters, but I don't think it matters as much as when there were like 10 million Bitcoin available to be mined versus now we're down to such okay. a small amount. Having said that, Bitcoin still remains in a bullish bias here. The reason I say that is because you're still holding these key lines, right? I mean, you have this one all the way over here. This connects perfectly through here and right through here. And then you have this pivot low and this pivot low, right? So these two lines, this is what I would call my zone of support between, really it's around between 66,000 and I would say about 69,000. If we break below 66 here and confirm that's where price, you, as, a, as an investor in Bitcoin, if you're a short, I mean, if you're long-term, who cares, right? I mean, your, yeah. your view is that it's going to 100,000, then Eventually, million, right? Yeah. But if you're a shorter-term investor, this is not what you want to see. You don't want to see confirmation below this area because it really does open it up for a bigger corrective move, probably 52 to 48,000 in that zone. But right now, I mean, you can see, again, it came down into this support area and got pushed right back up. Resistance is right here, just below 74,000. And that's right now, you have to continue to be neutral to positive bias on Bitcoin until until it breaks, or if it breaks this, then you switch. Okay, you also have been following oil, of course. Yes. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, let's take a look at oil here. 
Um, and by the way, gold, we have gold here too. Gold is fractionally positive today. It is running into my long-term level just to I really that. quickly sh show that. And again, just to, I want to keep it as clean as possible. So I want to remove this trend line. But if we go to our monthly chart and zoom out, this is that line that I've talked about now for the last little bit saying, you know, you'll finally see potentially a pullback on gold here. It's just a pullback though, maybe back to this area here before it, you know, goes like that. But today, again, it's neutral to positive. It's still holding up. It's not getting pushed down yet. We'll have to see in the coming days. And then oil, if we flip over to oil here, oil's rolling over a little bit today. It is slightly lower, but you got to be impressed. This is the daily chart. And what we could see here is that, in fact, I'm going to go to my intraday oil because I want to show you guys the overnight action. Oil was actually pounded last night when the futures opened. Here, this is where we closed on Friday. This is where we opened last night at 6 o'clock when the futures opened East Coast time. We got this flush while everyone was sleeping, probably light volume. But look at how it came back and then kind of chopped around here. And it's really, for the most part, it's about flat from where it closed on Friday. If we draw a trend line right here, I mean, it's, it's maybe down slightly, but not by much. So it's holding up right now. I actually, I was bullish up to 85. Now I'm more in the bearish camp of thinking that eventually oil is going to roll over here. The catalyst for a rollover, though, is you know, the U.S. economy starting to look weaker. So whether that's higher inflation and handcuffing the Fed or whether it's the earnings coming out later this week or next week, I do think some of the economic data is starting to weaken. And, and, and speaking of which, I know we were going to talk about the website, but I, I just want to show, you know, a lot of people are like, well, yeah, but the, the jobs numbers are so strong. Why does he think it's going to weaken? Well, if you go to this, and there we are on, on the homepage here, but a couple things. I wrote an article earlier today, and I want to just show you this. So this is commercial bankruptcies. Look at that. Commercial bankruptcy filings jumped 43%. That's a big <sighs> jump. That's just yes. from last, the first quarter of 2023 compared to the, this last first quarter we just finished. That's massive. That's not good. That's not like, oh, this is a soft landing, right? I mean, this is like, this is a warning sign here. So that's the first thing. And by the way, guys, you can find all of this stuff on Verified Investing's homepage. The other thing, too, that I think is kind of crazy is insider selling is just massively spiking. So this is, and, and again, this is insider selling. And look at these little greens. These are insiders buying. I mean, it's just like, they're so lopsided that it's like, what the heck? Yeah. And, and people would say, oh, well, insiders are just, you know, taking a little bit of money or whatever. But this is the same level that it was in 2021 when the market topped before the S&P dropped 27%. And remember that Mark Zuckerberg, who's been a big seller, Jeff Bezos has been a big seller. They have more data on the economy than probably the government does. I mean, think about everything. No doubt. Yeah. Yes. Like, like they're, they're seeing keyword trends. They're seeing people spend. I mean, Amazon, everyone's on Amazon buying. And they're see, so he's seeing all the trends on Amazon, how much money is people, are people spending on a daily basis. So these guys have so much information. And if you see this, that to me, I'm like, you know, you start putting some of these pieces of the puzzle together. And sure, we're not in a recession right now, but something's not right here. That's all I'll say. These are all the signs. And I'll tell you what, these are not headlines that you're not going to find anywhere else, but they're not going to be on the front page. Right. And you get right to it. You put out the information that is most important. So you're going to find news. You're going to find education. You're going to find so much more. That's right. Talk about what I'm not mentioning right now, because we're talking yeah. about the new Verified Investing website. So maybe you come to watch us here on the YouTube channel, but you've got to go to verifiedinvesting.com because we've just completely revamped the yeah, website. Yeah, it's, so, it's such a cool shop. site. It's, it's, it's really amazing. And again, you know, it's, it's just my goal is to kind of create a place where the small investor can find the data and the truth, right? So it's yes. like, it's like, you know, you can go to CNBC or Bloomberg and kind of get what their spin is on it and, you know, whatever. But it's like, it's like, listen, let's just actually look at the actual data, the charts. What are the charts telling us? What are the trends telling us? And that's really what it's all about here at Verified Investing. So it's, it's about giving the small investor the information that they probably aren't finding by going to mainstream media. Exactly. Of course, all the um, posts on social media are also on here. Yep. And then courses. There are many, many courses right. um, each of the traders are coming out I with wouldn't, courses, If I didn't so. know what I know, which is what we teach in these courses, I mean, I'd just be a, a sheep following the herd like everyone else. So. Yeah, yeah. And learn from his mistakes, okay? That's, That's right. That's what he's doing they it for. They cost me a lot. Let my, <laughs> uh, let my mistakes and, and costs be your gain. Gareth, thank you so much. We appreciate it. And remember, you can catch Gareth for free. Navigate the charts in real time every weekday morning at 9 a.m. on his show. It's called The Game Plan, and it airs right here on the Verified Investing YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching Trading the Close on this Monday. We will see you back here tomorrow. Make it a great rest of the day.